Hello there, AB here. I've got a few questions for you that go along the lines of this. Do you own this case or do you want to own this case? Uh, and following that, do you have questions like, uh, can this radiator size and fan fit in the front with a full size graphics card? Uh, can I fit this pump and reservoir onto the pump bracket on the side panel that's provided uh, and still have enough space for that, that radiator and that fan? Uh, and will, the, uh, will things like the CPU and the GPU uh, cooling loop system be able to fit together nicely with uh, a hard or soft tubing loop, things like that? So these questions can go on quite extensively and they can get uh, way out of your knowledge, especially when you don't have uh, the parts in front of you or the case as well to be able to actually work these things out yourself. If you had them with you, you can answer those questions, but when you don't, you haven't got much to go on. So hopefully uh, using uh, the sort of result of a project that I've been working on for the last few weeks for this video, uh, for guys who want to answer questions like that, uh, I'll be able to arm you with the advice and the stuff that you need to answer these questions yourself. So for the last three weeks or so, I've been working on a little project, and that project being uh, that I've been extensively modeling the Fantex M3 Evolve MATX case in SketchUp. Uh, models of which are available to download in the links in the video description. Uh, there's three variants of the model. There's a gray, a white, and a black one, which are the three colors that are available uh, of this case. Uh, for those of you who need a guide how to use SketchUp, uh, or how to, or maybe want some advice uh, of the nuances I've added into the, uh, into the model, just to make it a little bit easier for you to use, then uh, then wait till the end or skip to the end and I'll do a little bit of a brief uh, run through of how to use SketchUp and how to use the case in SketchUp. So let's go over what's inside the inside the model so you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, there's the uh, steel chassis of course which everything connects to, there's both doors with hinges connecting it to the steel chassis, uh, there's the top and bottom panels with diffuser like plastic uh, connectors uh, or well they are connected actually they connect to the uh, steel chassis with its clips. Uh, there's a hard drive cage panels which are two separate pieces but they're one component together in SketchUp which I'll describe later on if you're not sure how SketchUp works. Uh, there's a extra side panel which the case comes with uh, and then there's also the water pump bracket which is intended to connect to that and another part of the bottom of the case uh, I think. Uh, there's both variants of SSDs brackets with uh, the single and double variant. I've used the double. The single comes with the case, the double does not, but it is a Fantex um, official product, so I thought I'd involve that uh, with the case. There's also the optical drive cage with its panel replacement in case you want the optical drive cage or you don't. Uh, and then there's also the PCIe uh, Express covers for when you take a graphics card out and you want to replace it with that slot to cover the gap. Um, in short, there's the case with all this extra parts and accessories that come with it, uh, as well as that double SSD bracket. Uh, just to, as a note that I'm, I'm probably going to forget to mention later, uh, all of the screw holes and slots uh, are all in, are all well cut out of the different panels and things like that. So when you're taking them apart, you should have a good idea of roughly where they go back together based on the screw holes. Uh, the screws aren't aren't modelled. You know, I would have done it, but in all honesty, it's not something that's going to uh, make or break your ability to be able to plan inside this uh, inside this model. So just to go into a bit of the accuracy of the model, so you have a bit of legitimacy as to you know me making it and going, well, how do we tell that this is uh, actually um, to scale and the right sizes? Uh, basically, to get the best mo uh, model accuracy I could, I used a digital vernier caliper, which is accurate to 0 0.01 of a millimetre. Uh, so that did all my measurements from 0 0.5 being the smallest I came across in the case, all the way up to 150 millimetres. Uh, and then I also used a, a mostly not broken uh, it doesn't affect the measurements by the way and mostly not broken ruler for the measurements above 150 millimeters to 450 or so so that level of accuracy I like to claim that this model has a rough accuracy of uh, one millimeter or so uh, so this means that if you have questions like is this huge full-size graphics card gonna fit in with this uh, extra thick radiator and these fans uh, as well as the pump mount bracket going on with the pump and reservoir combo on top of that uh, Are these things gonna fit together and in the likelihood that most people on the internet probably aren't gonna have all the specific pieces that you want uh, In the same build in the same configuration if none of those boxes are ticked for you to get an answer Then you have a good idea of whether it will work in this case just by uh, roughly uh, modeling them inside this case uh, So you should be able to get manufacturers guides as to dimensions for all these components you want and you should be able to put them within you know tolerance together inside the case in the model and just say hmm is that is that too close or not too close uh, I'd say if there's uh, um, roughly like two or three millimeters you should be okay if you're about a millimeter away then you might just be like 
touching things by the time you've actually got the pieces together inside the case in reality. Um, if you're 10 millimeters um, clear of um, of things like the graphics card and the fan or something like that, then I'd say you've, you, it, well, accounting for the uh, cables and things to go through as well, I'd say you're well clear and you should be good uh, to purchase those items being sure that they're going to fit inside the case. I definitely recommend using this uh, model if you're planning your first custom loop or if you're planning a custom loop with this case and you're a little bit unsure and you haven't got all the parts or in fact any of the parts. Uh, I've only got the case, I actually built this uh, as just a confirmation of whether my, uh, my uh, system's going to work. I haven't actually had a chance to be able to build my configuration inside the case. I'll do that at another date but I want to get the the uh, model out to you guys as quickly as possible because obviously you guys might find it useful and I wouldn't like to say uh, to upload this model um, a day after somebody starts like purchasing stuff and they weren't quite sure so that's why that's that. So I definitely recommend using this model if you're looking to get the case or do any custom work inside it, uh, whether you're looking to drill stuff and fit and something special in certain areas, something special in certain Okay, um, so if you're looking to do custom water cooling loops and things like that, I definitely use this to plan out that uh, in advance of buying things. If you want to uh, have custom uh, or several custom configurations of your loop side by side in the model, uh, then you could do that. You'd have to make sure that you unlock all of the parts that are locked. This might be a bit more of a pain because I've, I've locked several parts just so there's less chance of someone making a mistake who is not quite sure using SketchUp or even someone very confident using SketchUp moving things out of place accidentally. So what I'd recommend doing then, uh, failing uh, you unlocking all those parts, which I wouldn't bother recommending, it's too much of a fuss, uh, I'd copy the file out a few times and then have the windows side by side next to each other and have different ones. You can compare them both and turn them around with each other in different ways. So it's probably better to do that that way regardless. So just as a side note, a bit of an FYI, uh, all the colours inside the uh, inside the model are very consistent. So the same material black has been used where everything is black. Same thing for white, clear colours. The LED is different colour to the uh, the clear piece of uh, sort of plastic there where the uh, LED shines through. So the the LED itself can be a different colour as well if you wanted it to be. Not that you'd see it uh, from the outside. Um, but yeah, all of them are those consistent colours. So this means if you want to take this and your custom loop and put it into a render and, and just see how cool you can make it look, then, uh, then they're all consistent. Just be careful of when you import things, as you're probably well aware of if you do render already, uh, you could import you know, a pile of crap ton of files, so when you take it into the rendering program, uh, then it shows up as a pile of different materials you need to assign or not, uh, and it might look bad because you can't be bothered to assign all of them. Just be careful of those things and you should be uh, completely fine. So just as a couple more FYIs, uh, the steel that I've modelled inside the case is modelled as 0.5mm thick. Uh, it's actually closer to 1mm but I started off with 0.5 and for consistency's sake, which is really important in models, if you start off with something you're better off going through with it if it's not that big a deal, uh, I stuck with 0.5mm. That means that the internal dimension from uh, one side of the case to the other will probably be out by a maximum of about 1mm, maybe 1.5mm if my accuracy of measuring is a little bit shot. But in, in reality, that's not going to make a huge difference. Flex with the metal, if you're screwing things in together, it's probably going to account for that. If it doesn't, then you can probably uh, um, use a washer just to uh, cover that. You can get black washers or silver washers or white painted washers if you really have to. So that's options for you in that front. So just as a second FYI, there's a bit of uh, a recess in the top of the chassis, which is underneath this panel. Uh, there's a, a small recess circular bit around here, uh, which is about two millimeters lower, just in that very specific region. Uh, that means that um, it's right underneath or right above where the optical disc drive um, mount attaches. So the optical disc drive um, screws at the rear are perfectly in place. So if you line up the holes, which they will be lined up uh, um, automatically at the start when you open the file, uh, if you line up the holes there, it'll be fine, but it'll be two millimeters from the internal top to the, uh, the side there. I sort of missed that uh, on purpose, uh, sort of missed it on accident, but I do know it's an issue and hence before the video I could have fixed it by now, but as far as I'm concerned, the work that needs to go in to sort that is is probably more more um, strenuous than it is um, for your sort of benefit. There's there's more work than there is benefit available by doing that little bit there. So just as long as you're not uh, too stringent on that uh, top piece for the um, optical disc drive, then you should be doing okay. 
However, these little things, these little anomalies are not going to steer you far wrong in light of the uh, complexity and the size of, of this model. Uh, this, remember that's just 2mm in the optical drive cage from, the, from the, its connection to the top of the chassis, so it's 2mm, much thinner than that. Um, and then you've got um, a maximum of a millimetre from internal to internal measurements of the steel. Um, that's a maximum millimetre, so 0.5mm either side. Um, but everything else is uh, modelled as accurately as I possibly can. Uh, I did forget to put in or forget I didn't model them in because I really couldn't be bothered. Uh, there's two PCBs at the back of the case on the back of the motherboard tray. Uh, one of them is for the power on-off switch with the audio plug-in jacks. Uh, the, the holes are cut out in the panel, so that should give you a rough idea of where those are and how big it is. Uh, and then there's also the fan hub, which is connected to the back of the motherboard tray. Again, it's not something that's going to kill you if you uh, if you sort of get a few mil out, but if you are planning um, to have something around the back of the motherboard tray, then that sort of thing, you can ask me a question in the comments and I'll answer. Um, as accurately as I can with as much description as I can so you get it right. Um, I have also not done the um, cable management loops for the velcro uh, straps you get. Uh, I'm not going to do things like the, the, those tiny things. Those are the only things I've missed out. Everything else is modelled in there as to an accurate scale as I could possibly do with a micrometer. Micrometer? Um, digital vernier caliper. So now I'm going to be moving on to the uh, the sort of screen capture part with advice of how to use SketchUp in the model. If you've made it this far, I thank you so much for watching this. Uh, please take the model uh, and plan your custom loops and configurations with it. Uh, give me a comment in the in the video description if you found it useful, that would be really awesome. Um, but anyway, I'll be moving on to the screen cap bit now with a bit of advice for those of you who don't know how to use SketchUp or want a bit of advice as to how I would recommend that I would use this model I've made. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, I'll get on with that now uh, and I'll see you in a second for those of you who need some advice.